Hey, what's good everybody? In this video, we're going to harness the power of NFS and AutoFS to share a user's home directory across multiple machines. Now, while this specific topic does not necessarily have a corresponding RHCSA exam objective, it does indeed borrow from and apply some useful skills from the other objectives, such as, let's see here, mounting NFS shares, and configuring AutoFS. And that's really just to name a few. There's even a bit of managing users and groups in here as well. So consider this to be more of an exploratory type of practice session where we'll be covering a variety of little concepts. Okay, cool, let's get going. What you'll notice here right from the get-go is that I have two machines prepared to demonstrate this process that we're gonna go through. So that'll be App Server 1 and App Server 2, and I'm logged in as root on both of these machines just to make things go a little bit more smoothly. Okay, so we can start with this machine, App Server 1, which will be our NFS server. So remember to uh, install the NFS utils package with a yum install NFS utils. And there we go, we can get it installed. And this is gonna give us the NFS server service, and then we'll just need to enable that service with system CTL, enable NFS server. There we go, now it's enabled. And what we'll do now is create a base directory for our shared home folders. So in other words, this is just going to be another directory that we're gonna export with NFS. So I'll just do a make dir slash our home, that's what I'm going to call this. I'm going to call it our home for remote home, but you could use any name as long as you're being consistent. And yeah, we'll just create that directory. And basically we're doing this because we want to avoid using the standard slash home directory so that there's a clear separation between the shared and unshared account profiles. Next, we'll just need to export this directory, like I just said. So we'll go into etc exports. And in here, I'm gonna add that slash our home directory and then some options. So I'm gonna put a wildcard star here and that's to signify that any machine can connect to this uh, specific share and then some mount options. So I'll just do read, write and sync. That's the pretty standard stuff and that should be okay. Now, um, usually the wildcard is a bit overkill. You could always specify your internal network ID instead, um, but we'll just go with this for simplicity. Okay, cool. Now let's just make sure to start the NFS server with systemctl start NFS server. I almost said NFSD, but this is the name of the service. And there we go, now it's started. And we'll also need to allow NFS in the firewall as well. So firewall-cmd, double dash permanent, double dash add service NFS. And that should be good. And then we'll just reload the firewall real quick. And there we go. Now we should be all set with that. Now, what we're going to do next is add a user with a relatively unique user ID and group ID that we can reuse on our other machines. And we're also going to specify the base directory in the user add command as the slash our home path that we just created. So that was a lot of mumbo jumbo. So let me just show you what I mean. We'll use the user add command, and we're going to add a user, which I'm going to call T Porter or teleporter, since we're kind of like teleporting here. Thought that was kind of funny, but we're going to need some extra options. So basically, we're going to set the base dir to slash our home, and this is going to tell user add to create the initial home directory underneath this slash our home directory. Next, we're going to do a UID as 2000. I just thought that was a nice even number that's away from the standard 1000, which is where UIDs start from. So that should give us some room to, uh, you know, work with. And then we'll set the group ID for the primary group to 2000 as well. So I can tell you right off the bat that this is not going to work right away because we're also going to need to create a primary group for this user as well. So yeah, it's not going to work. It's going to complain about exactly what I just said. So we'll do a group add and then set the group ID to 2000. 
or T Porter. That's going to be the name of this group. We can just do that and then run this command and it should work just fine. Cool. So now if I run something like get int password t porter, and this is just going to pull a line out of the password file for us, you'll notice that the home directory is slash our home slash t porter. So that's what we want. So that's good. Cool. All right. So with that covered, let's work on the other machine. And for everything to work smoothly, we're going to need to have the same slash our home directory. So we'll just make sure that again, our home, there we go. And uh, we're going to run a similar command to add the T Porter user, just like we did on app server one. So I'm going to copy this line, just like so. Let's see if I can do that. Paste it in here to add the primary group. And then we're going to paste in this. Now, before I run this, I'm actually going to want to do a double dash no create home option. And the reason for this is because we want to have only one canonical home directory for this user and not have a copycat directory already present on one of our local machines. So you'll see this makes sense in just a moment, hopefully. Uh, basically, if I ls slash our home, there's not going to be a deporter directory in there. But if I do slash um, our home in here, ls slash our home, you'll see that there is a deporter directory. So we only want one deporter directory. We don't want multiple instances of that and cause confusion. So yeah, there we go. And all that's really left to do next is to install the NFS utils package again, as well as AutoFS on this system so that we have the NFS client and a way to automate using that client. So yum install NFS utils and AutoFS. We'll just do that. All right. And uh, yeah, now we're just going to need to configure AutoFS. So we'll go into the etc auto.master configuration file. And down here, I'm going to add a new line for an indirect map, which I'll call under slash our home. And I'm going to make the configuration file etc auto.our home. That sounds appropriate. We'll just save that. And now we'll edit that new auto. Um, our home in indirect map configuration file. So auto dot our home. And yeah, in here, we're just going to use some map key substitution to make this a more dynamic solution. So we'll just do a star over here and then dash FS type or whatever mount options you want. And I'm just going to set that to NFS four. And then we'll just need to specify our share. So that's going to be app server one dot labnet colon. And then the export is slash our home. And I'm going to put an ampersand over here on the end to match up with the wildcard character, the star over here at the beginning. Okay. So that makes sense. And yeah, we'll just save this. It looks good. And we'll be able to demo this in a couple of ways in just a moment. But now uh, what we'll do is enable and restart the AutoFS service. So systemctl enable. I think I can just do an enable now AutoFS and that should be enough. There we go. And I guess we can check the status just to make sure everything is all good. Status. Yep, that looks nice. And now let's actually try to log in to the T Porter user from App Server 2. So you'll notice if, first of all, if I log into T Porter on App Server 1, it logs in instantly. And um, I have my own home directory. I can create some files just like that. But now if I log into T Porter on App Server 2, it takes a second, I hope you notice that, but now I also have the same files. They're present on both machines uh, because it's being, you know, served to App Server 2. That's what the NFS server does. 
But yeah, um, I can create another file here. Right? And then it's going to be present over here as well. So yeah, um, this is pretty cool. It's a big booyah right there. It's definitely working as we wanted it to. And moreover, if I run df over here on App Server 2, we can see that the share is indeed mounted. So that's looking really good right there. Cool. Okay, so I'll log out of tporter on both of these machines. And um, what I'm gonna do now is just show you that we can add new users in a similar way as before. And since everything else is set up right, uh, we'll be able to just run a couple of commands and then have a new user with a shared home directory as well. So I could do something like add a primary group, a new primary group for a new user, which I'll call jchan. And I can also add the new user with the new primary group, jchan. And then I can just replicate that over here on App Server 2 as well. So we'll replace tporter with jchan and Set that up. Actually, need to also do a group add group ID 2001 J Chan before that. That should be better. There we go. So now that's created successfully. And basically, now um, you'll notice that under slash our home, there is a new J Chan directory. And um, checking my mounts once again. I'm going to su as jchan. It takes a moment, but now if I run df, we can see that the jchan directory has also been mounted remotely. So that's good. And moreover, I can just create some files here. Like, I don't know. Something like that. And then I'll be able to see it over in here slash our home jchan like i'm just showing you that it's an nfs server and it's doing what nfs servers do not super interesting but it is a bit uh cool i guess so yeah um now if i didn't mention this already uh this uh video was suggested by one of my commenters and uh they were asking about basically uh, this topic as well as how to change the password. So I wasn't sure about what the, that person meant by that, but we of course could run something like password t porter, right? And then just set a password over here. And then I could also do the same thing here, password t porter, and set a simple password over here as well. However, uh, these passwords obviously are not synchronized. While the home directories are a little bit unified, the passwords aren't. And obviously, um, you're going to need to manually change it on each machine. So if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted things to be synchronized, that would be the job for some, some solution like LDAP, right? And really, that's like its own can of worms. And I'm going to treat that as out of the scope of this video. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. And see you around.